Scientists at an Oxfordshire lab say they've made a historic breakthrough in their quest to develop practical nuclear fusion, the energy process that powers the stars. Over the course of five seconds, the joint European Taurus JET laboratory near Abington recreated the way the sun works to make 59 megajoules of energy, more than double the amount achieved in similar tests back in 1997. The results are good news for advocates of nuclear energy as a clean alternative to fossil fuels. Scientists have been working for decades to try to develop fusion energy as a viable power source. Unlike the burning of fossil fuels or the fission process of existing nuclear power plants, fusion offers the prospect of abundant energy without pollution, radioactive waste, or greenhouse gases. Fusion works on the principle that energy can be released by forcing together atomic nuclei rather than by splitting them, as in the case of the fission reactions that drive existing nuclear power stations. In the core of the Sun, huge gravitational pressures allow this to happen at temperatures of around 10 million Celsius. At the much lower pressures that are possible on Earth, temperatures to produce fusion need to be much higher above 100 million Celsius. No materials exist that can withstand direct contact with such heat. So to achieve fusion in a lab, Scientists have devised a solution in which a superheated gas or plasma is held inside a donut-shaped magnetic field. Nuclear fusion combines two light atomic nuclei to form a heavier one, occurring at super high temperatures and accompanied by the release of huge amounts of energy. Fusion reactions are a primary energy source for stars, including the Sun. However, this reaction can only take place in the presence of extreme heat and pressure. The high temperature gives enough energy to overcome mutual electrical repulsion between nuclei the laboratory uses a donut-shaped machine called the Tokamak for its studies. The JET is the largest and most powerful operational Tokamak machine in the world. Inside a tiny amount of fuel comprising deuterium and tertium, both are isotopes of hydrogen. With deuterium, also called heavy hydrogen, is heated to temperatures 10 times hotter than the center of the sun to create plasma. This is held in place using superconductor electromagnets as it spins around, fusses, and releases tremendous energy as heat. The process works on the principle that energy can be produced by forcing together atomic nuclei to form new elements, as opposed to splitting them, which is the procedure that powers the world's existing nuclear power stations. Fusion is inherently safe in that it cannot start a runway process and releases nearly 4 million times more energy per kilogram than burning coal, oil, or gas. It also does not produce greenhouse gases and creates virtually no waste. In the experiment, the fusion reactions at the European Joint Project JET achieved 59 megajoules of energy over a 5-second period expressed as a unit of power that comes to just over 11 megawatts, averaged over 5 seconds, the previous record of 22 megajoules was the equivalent of 4.4 megawatts, averaged over 5 seconds. Tony Don, program manager of the Eurofusion Group responsible for the research, said that the result shows that scientists are on the right path. George Friedman, UK Minister of Science, Research and Innovation, said the UK was committed to helping fusion energy succeed. We are determined to make sure we adopt it in our energy mix and make clear to the energy sector that this technology is coming. If we can maintain fusion for 5 seconds, we can do it for 5 minutes and then 5 hours as we scale up our operations in future machines. Don said, as pressures mount to address the effects of climate change through decarbonizing energy production, the success is a major step forward on fusion's roadmap as a safe, efficient, low-carbon means of tackling the global energy crisis. UK AEA said in a statement, Record results announced recently are the clearest demonstration worldwide of the potential for fusion energy to deliver safe and sustainable low-carbon energy. The CEO of UK AEA, Ian Chapman, says the results are landmark and will bring us a huge step closer to virtually emissions-free energy. It's clear we must make significant changes to address the effects of climate change and fusion offers so much potential. Chapman says, We're building the knowledge and developing the new technology required to deliver low-carbon sustainable source of baseload energy that helps protect the planet for future generations. Our world needs fusion energy, he adds. Fusion reactions in the lab famously consume more energy to initiate than they can output. At JET, two 500-megawatt flywheels are used to run the experiments, but there is a solid evidence that this deficit can be overcome in the future as the plasmas are scaled up. ITER's toroidal vessel volume will be 10 times that of JET. ITER is a fusion research project supported by China, the European Union, India, Japan, South Korea, Russia, and the United States. It's hoped the French lab will get to break even. The commercial power plants that come after should then show a net gain that could be fed into electricity grids. This is a long game, and it's significant that of the 300 or so scientists working at JET, a quarter is in the early part of their careers. They'll have to carry the baton of research forward. Fusion takes a long time, it's complex, it's difficult, said Dr. Athena Kapatu, who is in her 30s. 
This is why we have to ensure that from one generation to the next, there are the scientists, there are the engineers and the technical staff who can take things forward. Many technical challenges remain, however, in Europe these challenges are being worked on by the Eurofusion Consortium, which comprises some 5,000 science and engineering experts from across the EU, Switzerland and Ukraine. The high temperature gives enough energy to overcome mutual electrical repulsion between nuclei. The laboratory uses a donut-shaped machine called the Tokamak for its studies. The JET is the largest and most powerful operational tokamak machine in the world. Inside a tiny amount of fuel comprising deuterium and tertium, both are isotopes of hydrogen. With deuterium, also called heavy hydrogen, is heated to temperatures 10 times hotter than the center of the sun to create plasma. The UK is a participant too. Its full involvement in ITER, however, will require first for Britain to associate with certain EU science programs, something that so far has been held up by disagreements over post-Brexit trading arrangements, particularly in relation to Northern Ireland. JET is likely to be decommissioned after 2023, with ITER beginning plasma experiments in 2025 or soon after. Fusion Energy has plenty of skeptics, given how long it has taken to make progress, but its promise as a tool to fight climate change has increased interest over the past decade. Fusion power would emit no greenhouse gases, and supplies of the chemical inputs are essentially inexhaustible. There are approximately 5 grams of deuterium in every bathtub of seawater, and while tritium is less accessible, it can be extracted from the commonly occurring metal lithium, or generated in the reaction itself. A small glass of fuel could theoretically power a house for hundreds of years. JET and ITER are two of several large publicly funded fusion projects around the world, but private sector money has also been flowing into fusion energy startups. Total private sector financing had reached more than $3 billion by the end of 2021, with some of the ventures aiming to deliver commercial power in the 2030s. George Friedman, UK Minister of Science, Research and Innovation, said the UK was committed to helping fusion energy succeed. We are determined to make sure we adopt it in our energy mix and make clear to the energy sector that this technology is coming. The fusion announcement is great news, but sadly it won't help in our battle to lessen the effects of climate change. There is huge uncertainty about when fusion power will be ready for commercialization, one estimate suggests maybe 20 years, then fusion would need to scale up, which would mean a delay of perhaps another few decades. Nuclear fusion would offer a way of generating power that could potentially provide an infinite amount of electricity with zero carbon emissions, and here's the problem. The need for carbon-free energy is urgent, and the government has pledged that all electricity in the UK must be zero emissions by 2035. That means nuclear renewables and energy storage. Now that we've come to the end of this video, I want to thank you for sticking with me, and I'd love to know what you think of it. Just comment down below. Also, if you like this video, please make sure you like it and stay safe. This video is over, but if you want to see more, there's one on your screen right now, and there are a few more fun videos coming soon. I'll see you in the next video.